welcome back as we're about ready to get the second half of action underway here at Aces Field. Homecoming, and if you just joined us, our halftime score, it's the Aces leading the Ayersville Pilots comfortably, 26 to nothing. I say comfortably because that is a pretty good lead at halftime, but we still have 24 minutes of football to play. Aces got the ball to start the game, so they will be kicking it off to the Pilots to start off this second half. They put their foot into it, and it's caught up at about the 31-yard line and brought down at about the 39. Ball was carried by number 30, and that is uh, a player whose name and number is not on my roster. Oh, they're saying it was 20, Blake Iden. Okay, looked like a 30 to me. But I'm old. I'm old and I need new glasses. All right. Hand off, and again, they're going to give it to the big man to carry it up the middle. One of their two workhorse runners. That's number 32, Chase Eitenauer. We'll also see 34 Eiden and 36 Oswalt in there carrying as well. But it was Eitenauer this time. He'll get the ball out to the 45-yard line to make it second and five. And again, the Pilots really need to put something together offensively here quick in this third quarter. Man in motion. They'll pitch it back to him. Looking to turn the corner. And he will, but he won't get much in the way of forward progress. Ball was carried by Iden, number 20, Blake Iden. There are two Idens. Number 34 is Ike Iden. But no gain on the play. Iden gets him back to the line of scrimmage at the 45-yard line. It'll be third and five. Burner under center. Burner hands it off. And they're going to stop him short. Ike Iden carried the ball that time, and he got to the 48-yard line. It's going to leave him a couple yards short of moving the chains. And it looks like they're going to go for it. This close to midfield, why not? You're down 26. Need to make something happen here. Burner under center, hand off, and they're going to stand him up, and he's going to power his way forward. What an effort. Holy smoke. I don't think I'm the first one to say that, but man, what an effort. As Eitenauer, it looked like they had him stopped for no gain, and he just set his legs and started pushing forward. And he literally carried half the defense. I think he was getting some help from behind from his teammates. But they moved the pile all the way down to the 44-yard line of the Aces. First and 10, Ayersville. Burner dropping back to throw now. He's going to put the ball in the air. It's going to be over everybody's head. Intended receiver was number 10, Isaac Schindler. But that was a good 10 yards out of Schindler's grasp. Still Coach Smith having some words shouting from the sideline because he did not like the way that Schindler had managed to work free. If that had been a little more accurate throw, that could have very easily been six points for the Pilots. Second and 10 now for Ayersville. Ball remaining at the 44 yard line. Pitch back. Rolling out is Burner. Burner better watch out, and he's going to get taken down from behind, and the ball is loose, and I think the, the Aces got it. Burner was looking down the field, and he did not see the defender behind him. 
who not only took him down, but did the raking motion with the arms and slapped the ball out of Burner's hands onto the turf, and the Aces fall upon it. So that's the first turnover of the night. It goes Hicksville's way. The Aces back on offense, first and 10 on their own 45-yard line. 9.56 to go in our third quarter. Clock has stopped for the change of possession. Jake Miller barking out a hard count. Nobody bites. Gets the si signal from the sideline. Quick hitter out to the side and dropped. <laughs> Langham caught it at his shoelaces and just sort of bounced it real quick off the ground and you can't do that. <laughs> you don't get to take the little mini, you don't get to take the little dribble there. You got to have it under control and make a football move first. <laughs> so, second and 10. A good effort, though, by Langham. No doubt about it. And there's all kinds of problems there. And that's going to probably be five yards for the Aces at the false start. And that, I think, was just a missed snap count. Half the team went and half the team didn't. So some confusion there cost the Aces five yards. Make it second and 15. Tomaso in motion, dropping back. Miller unloads, got a man open across the middle, off his hands and incomplete. And that would have been the second long pass touchdown for Kyler Baird tonight. But Baird not able to haul that one in to make it third and 15. Sometimes the worst place you can hit a receiver is right in the hands like that. It bounces out. Can't quite get control. Baird obviously was doing everything he can he could to get that ball under control. Miller gets the snap. Pitch back to Camaso. Camaso finds a hole. Mason still on his feet. He gets across the 45-yard line and dragged down at the 44 of the pilots. And that should move the chains. It does. So once again, Mason Camaso, the go-to guy. Gets the Aces another first down and gets the ball across midfield into Pilots territory. Snap, Miller dropping back, looking downfield. Going to launch it again. Uh, nobody's going to get to that one. Nobody was really open, so hurled it in the direction of Bergman. They've been working on trying to get Bergman free on the sideline or at least get him close. You know, Jackson is six foot six, so he is one of those guys that's going to have a long vertical reach. So they keep working. He's only a freshman, or maybe he's a sophomore. Let me look and see. I don't want to. Yeah, he's a sophomore. So a younger player. But when they get that down and they're able to get him with a little more confidence, and I think he'll make a catch or two and it'll start to build up on him. And he's going to be a threat on the outside, and he's going to be one of those guys that you can then, you know, you can put him down at the end of the end zone on a short yardage play and throw it above everybody else and let him go up and grab it. I know that that's what they're envisioning for him. So nothing doing there either. So we're all the way to third down and nine now. And the ball has only been advanced a yard while I'm gabbing away. Miller. Getting the call from the sideline. Gonna need to hurry up here. High snap, Miller. Oh, Bergman went. Went to move up field before he had the ball under control and drops it again. So it's going to bring up fourth down and looks like they may be punting this time. So a couple of times the receivers had the ball and just had it slip through the tips of their fingers. It happened to both Baird and Jackson on this 
particular series. Baird and Bergman, I should say. Snap back. Gets a good leg into it this time. It'll come down and take an aces bounce. And the aces are saying he touched it. The aces are saying that the defender, or that the pilot player touched the ball and it bounced loose and they recovered it. And it looks like the officials are going to agree with that. What a change that will be. Nope, they're going to say no. Nope. Pilot's ball. Unfortunately, I, I can't really comment because our view was blocked, or my view was blocked by a whole bunch of players, so I could not tell whether the ball, I honestly could not tell whether the ball touched a pilot or not. But either way, it's a moot point. Ayersville has the ball back first and 10 on their own 22-yard line. So a nice punt from Turnbull. Burner, and they tried to call the timeout. I think they ran out of time. I think maybe the play clock expired on them. Either that or it's a false start. We'll see. Yeah, it's like a delay game. Nope, an illegal substitution. Okay. So I knew it was some sort of a procedure call. We could hear the pilots coaching staff shouting, snap it, snap it, snap it. So I was thinking they might have been close to running out of time on the game clock, or the play clock, excuse me. But they get backed up. It's first and 15. Hand off, up the middle, not much there. Pick up of maybe a yard. As I think that was Eitenauer with the carry. So Eitenauer gets him a yard and it's second and 14. Snap, drop back. Ball is in the air, he's got a man and it's gonna be picked off. Intercepted by the Aces. And that was Jake Miller making the INT. Miller got himself some great position. He was able to step right in front of the pilot's intended receiver, pick off that pass, and get the ball back for the Aces. First and 10 at the pilot's 45-yard line. So now the Aces plus two on the turnover count. Hey, here's... Last year's homecoming queen, Kate, Kate Bergman on there. Or I should say Caitlin Bergman. I don't, well, I don't know her well enough to call her Kate. Kate. Terrific gal, though. I think she's uh, Adrian College right now this year. Playing volleyball for Adrian, I think, if I remember correctly. So got an injured player, and that's Comiso. They help him up, and he bends over and touches his toes, and makes sure all 10 of them are still there. They are. So they'll get him some hydration and walk him off. And now the officials will convene. Second and four, ball at the 37 yard line. And I guess all sins for you. Okay, everything is cool. They're ready to resume action. Commiso will have to sit out for at least a play. Miller takes the snap, hands it off. Nice hole, still on his feet. Langham inside the 30 to the 29. First down aces. And here comes Mason Commiso back out onto the field. 
Spelling him was number 24, Cole Wortman. Wortman will come off. So now the Aces fully reloaded and ready to go. First and 10, another high snap. Miller looking downfield. Miller's in trouble. Miller escapes one. He won't get by the second one, and they bring him down back at about the 38-yard line. So that's the first time Miller gets dropped on a sack tonight. Comes at the 624 mark of the third quarter, so he's been protected pretty well so far this evening. But it is a nine-yard loss, so second and 19 on the quarterback sack. That time there was just nothing opening up for Miller downfield. And Jake was trying to stay on his feet long enough to get somebody open that he could see. Didn't happen. So Miller resets second and very long. Ball's caught. And it'll be a first down and a flag is thrown. So it may be coming back. So there's a flag on the field, so we'll wait and see here. Let's not get too excited because it looks like it might be another holding call against the Aces. And they are going to march it off. Uh, the spot of the foul at about the 22-yard line. So yeah, let's see. So they're going to say they're going to move it back to the 34-yard line. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul must have been the 24-yard line. So they'll move it back, and it'll be still second down, but now second and 15. So they still got four yards out of the play. It's like a magical four yards because it's still second down. So Quick handoff up the inside, and they're going to drop him before he makes it to the 30. So third and pretty long coming up for the Aces. Looks like third and about 13. Miller, hard count. Almost, but nobody flinched enough to draw the flag. And that's going to back him up five. So the Aces again get dinged by a false start. And so their third and 13 is going to become third and 18. And they'll be back out at 37 yard line again. 5.03 to go. <laughs> They must just like that area of the field. They spend a lot of time there. Oh, don't get mad at me. I, it, I, I'm not being disrespectful. Miller, third and 18, but we've seen the Aces overcome that before, even tonight. Camaso makes the grab, almost loses his balance, stays on his feet. Great move by Camaso. And he, I think it's going to move the chains for him. Camaso down inside the 20 yard line. He gets the aces into the red zone. Move the chains. First down for the aces. See, I said, you know, third and 18. They can make that, and sure enough. Camaso advances the ball down to the 18 yard line. The aces find themselves in the red zone yet again. Puts a man in motion. Gets it back to Langham. Braden looking to turn the corner. Braden does. Braden finds a hole. Braden still on his feet. Langham powering down close. Uh, he's going to be brought down at about the three yard line, it looks like. So another strong run tonight by Braden Langham, who's developing into a power back himself. He and Camaso have been doing a lot of damage to the Pilots' defense here tonight. And it'll be first and goal aces from the three-yard line. We're 
getting to the point now where we might have to start thinking about getting the continuous clock going against the Pilots. Go up 35 points. Touchdown, Aces. So the Aces take it into the end zone from three yards out. Langham, another six points added by his name in the scorebook. And the Aces up 32 to nothing. And they're going to uh, set up for the kick, which is what they did last week. They, they went for two in the first half, and they kicked for a point in the second half for the most part. Got his foot into that one and hooked it. I, I, have to, I have to admit, from our vantage point up here in the press box, at that end of the field, when they kick a field goal, it's kind of hard to see if, if, if they hook it to the near side. Uh, it's been a couple times where I would have sworn that the kick was good, but it wasn't. And then when I, when I watched it later, it, it wasn't. It really wasn't. So it's like an optical illusion or whatever. So it's just kind of hard to tell. So that's why if they kick an extra point down at that end of the field every now and then, you'll hear a bit of hesitation in my voice because I wait to see whether the referees say good or not so that I, you know, don't make a you-know-what of myself. And the clock is still rolling, so 30 points must be the threshold for the continuous clock then. Aces are leading 32 to nothing. I thought it was 35 points, but I'll take 30. So the Pilots, if they want to get the clock back to normal operation, are going to need to get some points on the board here. Because as we have seen a couple times already this season, when the running clock is initiated, it can be hard to overcome. Turnbull with the kick. Caught at the 25-yard line. And out of bounds. Ball carried by number 34. That is uh, Ike Iden. And Iden. Gets it out to about the 44-yard line where he's taken out of bounds. They will stop the clock for the change of possession. And they'll get the ball set. They'll get the chain set. And they'll start the clock. So we do officially have the running clock in effect now. Burner throws it out, and he's decked right away. Makes the grab. Catch made by Blake Iden, number 20. And as soon as Iden made the grab, he was wrapped up and put on the turf back at the 45-yard line. And they're going to actually give him forward progress to the 47. OK. Burner up under center. Burner handoff. Power back up the middle, back to about the original line of scrimmage. We'll see which one of the big men made the carry. It's like 30, 36. Or is that 32? I think it's 32. Eitenauer. Burner puts a man in motion. Pitches back. He eludes one tackle. And gets down to the 44-yard line of the Aces. That was number 36, Dakota Oswalt. So Oswalt gets him a manageable fourth down, fourth and four. And of course, they need to get points on the board if they want to get the clock back in normal operation to begin with. 
And if they want to stand any chance of getting back into this game, down by 32. Looks like a little confusion, but I think they've got it straightened out now. Pitch back. And first down yardage. And again, Oswalt gets him a nice run, gets him some positive yardage, and gets him a fresh set of downs. Clock continues to roll. 30 seconds left here in quarter number three. Sounds like Fairview's leading Antwerp tonight. Uh, he, he jumped, and if he would have kept moving, it would have been okay because he was in the backfield, but he stopped and looked around, and that's drew the flag, and that'll back him up five. And that'll be the end of the third quarter. So an inauspicious end to quarter number three as the Pilots are going to retain possession of the ball, but they'll be backed up with a first and 15 at the Aces 42-yard line when play resumes. 12 minutes of football left on this homecoming Friday night, and we want to say another big thank you to our football broadcast underwriters making our coverage possible here on Hicksville Community Television, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio, Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick, Jim Schmidt Ford, and the Jim Schmidt truck lot. If you're in the market for a vehicle, brand new pre-owned car, truck, van, SUV, stop by, check out the great selection they have on the lots, or you can check out the entire dealer inventory online at jimschmidtauto.com. And remember, you don't see what you're looking for. Let the folks at Jim Schmidt know what it is you'd like. Oh, almost made one up here. They are throwing little footballs. So far, no cheerleader has ever made it into the uh, press box with a football throw. Whoa. Oh, well, he made it next door. Oh. <laughs> so I was thanking Jim Schmidt. And we got distracted by cheerleaders throwing footballs. Boom. And I don't think any of them are going to have the arm strength to make it all the way. Back in action. Pilots dropping back. Ball in the air. And off the fingertips. Incomplete. That'll bring up second and 15. Well, maybe they'll do it in another game, Brian. Be able to get a football. So second and 15 for the Pilots as we get back in. Again, we'll say a big thank you to Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick, Jim Schmidt Ford, the Jim Schmidt truck lot at online at jimschmidtauto.com. And we'll mention them again here in the post game. Give them their dues. Strong carry, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. I think that was number 32 with the carry that time. Oh, number 36, I'm sorry. Oswalt. 10.45 again, the uh, running clock is in effect. So already down to under 10 minutes and 40 seconds and it moves mighty fast once it gets started. So second and, or make that third and 12 for the Pilots. Burner dropping back again, wanting to put it in the air, and nobody there. Nobody there with a red or a white jersey where that ball came down. And that'll bring up fourth down. Fourth and 12 now for the Pilots. Ace is looking to put a stop on him here, and then hopefully be able to just keep it on the ground and put together a nice long drive. Maybe get some more points, but more importantly, bleed that clock dry and come out of here with a W. Great way to get the homecoming weekend started. Right, he gets the ball away, and it's going to be intercepted. 
Another turnover for the Pilots, another interception for the Aces. And that's Kyler Baird, who now not only has a great catch and run tonight, but he also has an INT. So first and 10 aces, uh, that'll put him back deep on their own end of the field at about, uh, looks like about the 13 yard line. First and 10 Hicksville. And again, they're up by 32. So as long as they can keep the ball moving and generate first downs, they should be able to, with the running clock, really put a dent in the time that is uh, remaining here in this fourth quarter. Miller with the quick handoff. They'll power it straight up the middle. Langham will get the carry. He'll pick up about four or five yards. We'll see what they mark him officially. It'll be second down for the Aces. Second and six. Take the snap, handoff, nice hole right up the middle. That'll be first down yardage. And that'll be Wortman carrying the ball. Wortman with a nice carry out to about the 36 yard line, first and 10 aces. And they're still gonna keep Miller in for the time being at quarterback. Down to under eight minutes left in the game. Man in motion, high snap, handoff. And again, that's Wortman. And Wortman getting some varsity yardage here tonight as Wortman carries out to the 45 yard line to make it second in about a yard. Come back up into the shotgun. Second and one for the Aces. Hand off. And that's Comiso. Comiso slices right through the defense. Over to the far side. Comiso along the sideline. Into the end zone. Flags on the play. That one's probably coming back. I'm going to guess it's either an illegal block in the back or a hold. So Comiso goes unofficially 55 yards into the end zone, but I don't think it's going to count. They threw those flags, and a couple of red-shirted players turned around and looked at the officials and raised their hands up like, what, what, me, what, what? No way. And it is going to be against the Aces, and they are going to back them up. It'll still be a first down because it's a spot foul. The infraction occurred at about the 20-yard line, so they move the ball back 10 yards from the spot of the foul, which puts it at the 30-yard line, which is still well past the line again for the first down. So it will be first and 10 aces, but it will take the touchdown off of the scoreboard. And the aces will be working with a fresh set of downs from out at the 30-yard line. Another carry this time, Comiso works his way across and says, okay, I'll take a 30-yard touchdown instead of 55. Thank you very much. So Comiso punches it in. I think that's his third score tonight. I might be wrong, it might be two, I don't know. It's a good feeling when they've scored enough touchdowns, you have a hard time keeping track of who, how, who scored how many and which one. 38 nothing now, and they're gonna go for the kick again. Point 
And again, this is good practice for Landon Turnbull. It's not going to affect whether, you know, this isn't going to affect the outcome of the game, but it's good practice for Landon. Always good to have somebody that can kick the extra point, and that one ain't going to go anywhere. I don't know whether he just fluffed it or if somebody might have got a hand on it, but it was not a healthy-looking kick. Let's just put it that way. So the score remains 38-0, 6-17, and they'll stop the clock long enough for the change of personnel and get ready to kick it off. Then they'll fire up the running clock again. I know you're upset that you didn't get a football, but they usually do it two or three times every year. So if worse comes to worse, you can always go down and, you know, give them a puppy dog, guys. Couldn't, couldn't we please have a football for the guys up in the camera booth? Though I have to admit, they, they actually threw one into the press box. It was next door to us where the uh, field announcers are. But I think that's the first time I've ever seen one of the gals have the arm to be able to make it up this far. They had one that bounced off the face right below us, too. So that's happened a couple times. But Yeah, it's pretty cool. A lot of people are having fun now. They're throwing the footballs around down there. And it's always kind of a neat thing that the gals, the cheerleaders do. All kidding aside, they do a great job. Sometimes you forget, you know, but they're out here almost, you know, every time the football team is out here, and they travel and work really hard, too. Low kick, and he muffs it. It's loose. It's a live ball. He scoops it up back at the 16-yard line. Strong carry. He's still on his feet, and they won't get him until he crosses midfield. I think... I can't tell, I don't know if that was Eiden or Eitenauer. I think it was 34, Ike Eiden, with a strong return to the Aces 47 yard line. And the clock, the merciless clock, the running clock begins again. And timeout aces. So I think it was a personnel thing. So it looks like the aces might be starting to put in some of the younger players at this point in the game. 5.37 to go, running clock. They're up by 38. So... The Pilots will have to score a touchdown with a successful two-point conversion to be able to get the clock back to normal operation. And the Aces look like they don't give that a lot of chance of happening at this point. And even if it does, it's not going to affect the outcome of the game. So it looks like they're putting in some of the younger players. So we may be juggling the rosters around, and we'll see if the pilots have decided to do the same thing. Nope, it looks like they're going to stay with uh, Burner at quarterback. Of course, Burner is a younger player. He's just a freshman, so it makes sense to keep him in there to get him the varsity experience. Burner rolling out, looking downfield, puts the ball in the air, and he misses his receiver incomplete. That'll make it second and 10. Under five minutes to go here in quarter number four. Pilots with the ball, there are 38 points in the hole. And a new quarterback in, that is number 23, who I think is the other freshman. They are bottling him up on the 45-yard line for minimal gain. Uh, number 23, is that who it was, 23? Or is that 21?
We'll see if we can catch his number. They've got a quarterback listed with number 21. That is definitely 23. So on the roster, 23 is Darian Treat. So Treat is the acting quarterback. He's a sophomore. As they pull Burner. Fourth and five now for the Pilots. Bring in the play from the sideline, and Treat will set the offense. Treat's going to work under center. And hands it off. Nice handoff and a good fake. And that's going to be good enough for a first down. Ball was carried by number 12, Isaac Miller. And Miller gets the Pilots a first down at the 31-yard line. So Ayersville stays alive here. Go underneath, we go under three minutes. Treat under center, gets the snap. Hands it off again, that's to number 12, Isaac Miller. Or Myler, excuse me, Isaac Myler. We don't have the overhead light on here, it's M-I-L-E-R. I thought it was M-I-L-L-E-R, so Myler. So Isaac Myler takes it down to about the 27 yard line. Second and seven. Not many of the Aces faithful leading here. They're waiting around to celebrate a victory here on homecoming night. Fumble, ball loose on the, on the turf. Treat scooped it back up, so they retain possession, but he's swarmed under for a little bit of a loss. Again, Treat gets the snap, drops back. Ball almost picked off. Didn't have enough on it, and it was going to come up short, so. Fourth down. And closing in on a minute left to play in this contest. So. Seven yards for a fresh set of downs, but even then they'll only have time to maybe get a play or two off for the Pilots, or they're going to run this one and turn it over to the Aces, who can take a knee if they want. Hand off, and it's going to be turned over on downs to Hicksville at about the 26-yard line. So they'll... Set it here, and we're going to stop the clock with 28 seconds so they can change personnel. And they'll fire up the clock. Depending on what the game clock says, they might need to do a play, but I don't think so. I think they can just get it down to about four seconds and take a knee if they want to. And they may not even need to do that. Three, two, one. And that's it. So evidently they didn't even need to take a snap. And your final score, 
38-0. The Aces victorious on homecoming night. And it was a good night all around for the offense as they saw great work once again, as always, from Mason Comiso, but also some uh, good work tonight, too, from uh, Turnbull and from Langham. Kyler Baird as well. Jake Miller did a good job uh, at the quarterback position. And Cole Wortman getting in there for some good positive yardage as well. So a good balanced uh, offensive effort. And that's going to mean that the next opponents that they face aren't going to be able to just focus on one guy. So good all around there as well. With the win, the Aces... Even their record back up at 500, two wins and two losses. And the Pilots, unfortunately, going to have a long ride back to Ayersville as they drop to 0-4 on the season. The Aces now undefeated in the GMC 1-0. And the Pilots' league record will be, uh, of course, 0-1. So again, a good homecoming night for the Aces as they'll be able to celebrate, and that'll put a... A good spin on the big homecoming dance tomorrow night uh, over at the school. So, again, we want to wish everybody a safe and happy homecoming weekend. Now, next week, originally, it was going to be Holgate that we would be playing on the road at Holgate. But Holgate not able to put out a team this year. So, instead, uh, just like uh, the year before, we had the one odd non-conference game with the Kansas Lakota making the trip here. So this time around, it's the Aces and Brian and myself making the trip over to Kansas Lakota, which is like a 98 mile drive, about 100 miles, hour and a half. So, but we have, uh, we've been told, yep, we're all, they know we're coming. We got room in the press box. And they're looking forward to having us there and we're looking forward to visiting. So we'll be on the road to Lakota next weekend for what will be a non-conference game in week number five. But that's week number five, and we'll worry about that when it gets here. Right now, we're going to bask in the glory along with the Aces and celebrate a big win on homecoming night. Hey, we want to say a big thank you once again to uh, Mr. Overmeyer and Haught, the co-athletic directors here at uh, Hicksville High School, making us feel very welcome as always. We appreciate everything they do for us. Thanks also to our football broadcast underwriters, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships here in Hicksville, Ohio, Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick, Jim Schmidt Ford, the Jim Schmidt truck lot, and, of course, online at jimschmidtauto.com. You can see the entire dealer inventory, find out the hours of operation, get the latest on the new dealership. They're going to be opening up the new building that is going to be coming our way, and also service department hours and Sometimes they have specials and so forth on the website. It's worth stopping by and checking it out. And we thank them again for their continued support of our Aces football broadcasts here on Hicks TV. So that's going to do it. We're going to wrap it up and head on out of here this evening. Another win for the Aces. And we want to thank you for tuning by. Hope you enjoyed the coverage here tonight. And with that, we're going to wrap it up for week number four. For Brian Williams on the camera, I'm Bill Murphy with Hicksville Community Television wishing you a good night and good sports.